engravings. Everyone wants them, everyone needs them. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the engravings per engraving, going over availability as well as what the engraving does and what units generally want it or what weapons generally want it. So let's jump into it. So the emblem of beginnings is one of the best engravings. It's generally useful for a Lear's weapon. You wanna put it on something that you can upgrade long-term. So for example, if you put it on a steel sword, maybe instead of getting the steel sword to plus one to plus three, you just change it into a silver sword. Obviously this changes the weight, but steel sword is a good target for this engraving. Generally, you can put this on liberation on any weapon you want a Lear to run long-term. You do get it back very late, but you lose it on chapter 11. You do technically lose it, like starting with chapter 10, because you can't change the engraving as soon as you start chapter 10, because it's a two mission battle. But after chapter 11, you don't get it back for a while. So this one definitely is huge. A lot of, pretty much anyone wants this. There's no downside to using this at all. It just increases the stats and it's one of the best engravings in the game. So definitely going to be highly fought over, highly sought after among your units. The Echoes engraving is mostly just used for reducing weight on a heavy weapon so that a unit can double more consistently. It also does reduce damage, unfortunately, by one, but it also gives you plus 50 crit avoid, which basically negates crits. So if you have a unit with poor luck or that often gets crit, and they also want to double more consistently, this actually isn't a bad engraving. Reducing damage endgame, though, can be kind of painful, so you want some decent strength growth or base strength to compensate for that. But sometimes I don't even run this one, so it can kind of get swept under the rug, and the reducing might does hurt it a lot. But there is a huge upside of reducing crit, so if you just want to throw this on some unit who frequently gets crit, or you just want to get rid of crit rate on the units, you can throw this on like an axe or something because axes tend to have high enough might that one point won't make a huge difference. So it's not the worst thing, but it's not super huge impact, and it's mostly used for weight fixing and crit avoid. The Holy Emblem. This one is crazy. This is also similar to Beginnings, except it has better availability mid-game. You get it back chapter 17 and lose it chapter 11, but this can allow Chloe to carry your early game easily. It also is another one of the engravings that just has pure upside where you just get damage, weight reduction, and 20 avoid. So it helps literally any unit who wants to run it. And, you know, as with all engravings, it can be used on tomes. So if you want to have, you know, some Bolganon user, a Levin sword user, you can use it on spears. Axes, I don't think it's the best use case, but daggers, spears, tomes, swords, these are all good use cases. Same thing with beginnings. Uh, heavy things, like reducing the weight. You want it to, you want the weight reduction to be relevant. So when you throw it on something, you want it to actually help the unit using it. So if it's a unit who wields lances, so like Chloe or Lapis or something on Wyvern or Marin on Wyvern, on lances, you could use this on their weapon and it'll help them out greatly. It also helps them dodge a little bit better. Genealogy. This is also a really good one. It does increase the weight. So there's two ways to run this, in my opinion. The first one is to throw it on a unit who isn't going to double anyways. So the weight doesn't matter. And they also need an increase in damage and hit. So this is the main use case for this is increasing damage and hit. So it's great on axes or units with high build so that the weight doesn't matter. The other use case is using it on brave weapons for scaling the accuracy and damage and you also need to compensate for the increased weight so the units that are running these brave weapons have to either have high build or high speed stat to offset the weight but generally it's kind of like holy except that instead of reducing weight it increases it and it also increases hit and does give you 10 avoid so this one is also in my opinion, one of the better ones that a lot of units want on their weapons because one weight isn't going to make or break a unit's uh, doubling consistently. It's going to hurt it, but on average, if the unit is built correctly, this won't matter that much and it's just extra damage. So binding is good for increasing damage on single hit weapons like uh, L Thunder, Thoron, Lightning. It can also be good on longbow users who can't double or people who just can't double in general. So if you're on either a weapon type that can't double or on a unit who can't double because of speed limitations, this will just increase their damage. Now it does reduce avoid and the weight scales by eight, 
So it's basically going to prevent you from doubling with almost any weapon type unless you run it on a lance on a halberdier. So halberdier can always double as long as pincer attack is set up correctly. So you could run this on a unit that's doing that. You could also run it on dire thunder builds because that always doubles as well. So there are workarounds for the huge weight. So it's definitely more technical, but most units don't want this. And it's generally used on like three range poke weapons or specific builds that abuse doubling, that enable us to double. It does reduce your avoid, which hurts, and it does increase your weight. So even if you can double on Halberdier, you usually get counterattack doubled, and enemies can double you very easily because you're slowed down by so much. But it's still a pretty solid emblem, and it's pretty, pretty relevant. So Blazing is a pretty good engraving. It basically does a few things. It reduces weight by two, which is huge. Like that's definitely one feature of it that's amazing. It also drastically increases hit and it increases crit. So it does a few different things that make it kind of more flexible. Uh, however, it does reduce might by three. So generally it wants to be put on like a killer ax or some kind of ax because axes can have their weight, their uh, might reduced and it doesn't hurt them that bad but it can also be used for weight fixing for increasing hit rates, which is usually something axes want or for increasing crits. So it can be good on a bunch of different things, but it's definitely bad on like brave weapons or things that have low might because reducing might by three is going to really hurt damage output for a lot of weapons. So it's mostly used on crit builds for increasing hits for reducing weight. So it's pretty flexible, pretty decent. Sacred is nice because it does not decrease might and it does not change weight but it increases hit rate and also increases crit rate but it increases incoming crit rate and reduces a void so this is really good on ranged units who want to crit it also helps them hit more accurately uh, so if you're on a unit who can tank crits like let's say you have really high defense or really high res or you're on ike you could run this on units like you can run this on axes you can run this on crit builds you can run this on units who just have trouble hitting and as long as the incoming crit isn't a constant problem. It can be managed. And you can also switch their weapons by trading before you attack, for example. So if a unit would be attacked next turn, you can switch them off of this weapon. But overall, it's mostly used for like range poking. So Radiance is similar to Binding, except it just gives you one more point of might and a lot of weight. It gives you plus 15 weight. So it's basically the same thing as Binding. It's good on the brave effect weapon so it's good on like a brave uh, axe with panette for example it's good on dire thunder ring lightning builds it's good on like thoron for super poking where you just poke for as high damage as you can in a single hit and it will drastically scale your weight which slows you down which reduces a void rate and increases the probability like the likelihood that enemies are going to be way faster than you in w so pretty solid for specific things it can also be good on things like Georgios. So one thing I did on one of my playthroughs is I put it on Georgios, which I only used for using Lodestar Rush. So I would just hit a dude a bunch of times with Georgios and it would just one round them because it had insane might. So it can be used in these cases as well. But overall, it's pretty solid, but it's more, more niche. Dawn is really good for avoid tank builds. It also reduces incoming crits, but plus 40 avoid is huge. It also helps with weight fixing. However, uh, similar to Lin, it does reduce the might by three. So you can throw this on your dancer, for example, if you don't want to use this on any of your combat units, and it basically just makes him a dodge tank. You can also throw this on dodge tanks. And one thing you can do is you can like rotate weapons. So you can have like dodge tank daggers on like Yunaka or Zalkov and then switch them back to their normal daggers when you actually attack on player phase. So you'd have like enemy phase daggers to deal some chip damage that probably aren't going to one round as consistently because of the reduced might and then switch back to actual daggers or just use this on a super engraved weapon that you like plus three or plus five and you know enemy phase dodge tank but really good for dodge tanking i personally don't make use of it a lot i usually just throw it on sadal so that he can be an avoid tank just in case i accidentally position him poorly but on and even then like it doesn't happen that often uh, but definitely good for dodge tanking it does hurt most damage builds though so something to note so awakening is actually really good this one reduces damage by one, it reduces might by one, but it reduces weight by one as well. 
It also increases hit and it increases avoid, both of them by 30. So this is fantastic for weight fixing. It's also fantastic for hit fixing and also increasing avoid tank. So this is good on a lot of different weapons. I actually run this on Ivy's Bulganon and it makes her even more insane. It completely negates any accuracy issues she would ever have. That's one of the reasons people sometimes put her in like B or, or A tier. And it also, it will reduce her damage by one, but Bulganon plus like three, you know, you're just missing one point of damage, who cares? Like it's still really solid. It's good on Tomahawks, it's good on Bulganons, it's good on Lances. Like you can throw this, I wouldn't put this on a Brave weapon, but you can put on like a Silver Lance and it'll make any Lance user super accurate. They'll never miss essentially. It also increases avoid, so it helps with like dive comps. So if you have units with higher avoid and high speed, they can dive they can dive and tank more effectively so it's pretty solid definitely a good one fates is basically the crit engraving so what it does is it gives you plus 30 crit plus 30 dodge plus 10 avoid but it reduces damage by two uh, so this can be good on units who have high strength that are going for crit builds and the might minus two doesn't matter so killer sword killer lance uh killer axe would be decent on this this could also be good on certain dagger crit builds. Uh, Pesh Cash, I think that's the one, Pesh Cats or whatever, has high crit rate. So you could run it on this. And it'll deal less damage than a silver dagger by one or two points. Uh, or it might even deal the same, because I think it's like plus one or two might. So you could basically run this on daggers, and as long as the unit has high enough strength, it could be decent. But this is for crit builds, 100%. The fact that it also gives you crit avoid is nice, because then you have like asymmetrical crits. So not, not too bad, but I would say it's probably best on like a killer axe, to be honest. Um, and that's probably all I'd run on it or run it on because losing might definitely hurts crit builds. So if you can get crit without losing might, that's better, but you could run it on other killer weapons and probably be fine as long as the unit has high enough might and high enough, or I'm sorry, high enough strength so that when they hit their crits still hit hard. So Academy, this one's pretty decent actually. It doesn't affect might at all. It does raise weight by two, but if you're on a unit with high build that can double, which there are a few units who can do this, or if it's on a weapon that needs accuracy and weight doesn't matter, so like mostly axes, this is really good on like a tomahawk, on like a silver axe. This can be good on certain units on silver sword because silver sword when upgraded loses some weight and most units have like 10 to 12 build anyways. So you can throw this on specific weapons and it would be decent. You can throw this on weapons that hit like single anyways. So this can be thrown on like a Thoron to make it very accurate. It also increases crit rate slightly and basically negates incoming crits. So it has a lot of different use cases, but mostly it's used for increasing accuracy, slightly increasing crit and increasing crit avoid. And it's really good on single hit weapons, weapons that don't double anyways, or on units who can handle the weight but need accuracy. So for example, Saphir is a perfect example. She has higher might, or I'm sorry, she has higher build, but she tends to have poor accuracy. So throwing this on one of her, like on her Tomahawk or something, she'd be totally fine. She's not doubling anyways. Uh, she usually meets speed thresholds to avoid getting doubled by most enemies. And this would just make her super accurate. The fire emblem, I see what they did there. <laughs> so this one is kind of a mixed bag as well. It's very similar to Awakening except it has like less specialization, has like more general stats. It increases crit by 20, which is fantastic. It increases dodge by 20, avoid by 20, uh, hit by 20. It reduces weight and it reduces might. So this is great for weight fixing. This is great for increasing accuracy. This is great for avoid. This is great for crit. This is great for crit avoid. Pretty much does everything that you could want and would be good on most weapons. And it's probably one of the best like crit weapon modifiers because gives you plus 20 crit with only minus one damage and also helps with weight. So if weight was hurting the unit who's running crits, it helps them. So the dodge and the avoid is nice as well. And the hit is always pretty relevant. So to wrap up, I'll just show some of the weapons I ran. This is my second maddening run. So I definitely was missing a lot of information on builds and things like that. Uh, but I ran the steel sword with beginnings. I had two lances, two steel lance plus fives, uh, one with Celica, one with Sigurd. And then I also had the Silver Axe. I ran a Wyvern Jade, which was not that good. This Steel Axe was terrible, so I don't recommend running that. 
We had L Thunder, which should have been upgraded to Thoron, but at the time I didn't care to upgrade it because Anna was just one rounding everything with Bulganon. But you can see I did the weight fixing here to help her specifically, so I reduced the weight. Uh, it also increased the crit, so she actually was rolling crits every now and then. And then you can see a Super Poke Thoron, uh, an Excalibur on Ivy, so she can just like shoot things down with accuracy because enemy flyers, especially the Griffin Knights, have high speed and therefore high avoid. Uh, I did try running crit on Zelkov, but I eventually dropped him from the team. But this is an example of a dagger crit, and I could have put in. Or I could have put in. I could have put the Micaiah on shielding art, and that just makes Sadal super tanky. But he never really got hit, so it never really mattered. But yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful. And feel free to drop a comment. Let me know how you use your engravings. I didn't cover the DLC engravings, but I will be getting the DLC soon, and I'll do it in a future video. So thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next one.